begin to talk a little bit about the structure of Design Forward and what we've designed with Design Forward. And I want to preface this um, for those of you who don't know a little bit of the backstory of this. This is a program that's basically been in the works for about a year. Um, I had my first sort of a reminder of it because I, I kicked off my thinking about this during a conversation with a colleague and friend, Jesse Stommel, um, who doesn't, he, he works at another institution, but I used to work with him. Um, he and I had a meeting to talk about some work related stuff on January 6th of 2021. And um, I will always remember the day that I started thinking about Design Forward because literally as we met, um, they stormed the Capitol. <laughs> And I got off of that call with Jesse and opened my phone and saw, you know, everything that was going on. So it's kind of a terrible reason to know the moment when I started thinking about this, but that was it. So it's been a year um, in the making and um, it came about because we kind of knew for one thing that the CoLab, the, um, for those of you who don't know, the CoLab has been running the cluster learning pa um, pedagogy community for about three years under a grant from the Davis Foundation. Some of you have been involved in the CPLC. That grant is winding down and we wanted to know, we wanted to kind of decide where were we were going next, how we were gonna take forward the work um, that's been built through the CPLC and what that was gonna, what could that look like in terms of our faculty development offerings in the CoLab. Um, and we did a pilot actually as part of the CPLC last summer with a group of 10 faculty to come together and really grapple with some questions about critical instructional design and um, what the future might look like in terms of our faculty development programming. And then we spent this last fall sort of um, digesting all of that, talking to the faculty who we worked with last summer, thinking about um, uh, what this might look like. And where we landed was with the Design Forward program, which um, is made up of, I think it's 11 modules I'm going to just briefly take us through with that structure, the URL on the side of this slide here, you'll have a chance to look at this later. And actually, I don't know, Hannah, if you can drop that into the chat. Um, this is a URL of the Design Forward website that has all of these modules on it, so you can always go take a look at them. Um, it starts with these, the core modules. You are in orientation right now. This is the one required module of Design Forward because we want people to know the information that we've been talking about and that we're gonna to continue to share with you today before they progress any further. You'll notice there's another core module called one-on-one. -on -one. We're not running that this spring. It's something that we probably will revisit in the future, particularly as we have more people involved in this. It's an opportunity really for anybody who wants a little bit more of a one-on-one -on -one meeting with a facilitator of Design Forward to sit down and get some help getting started, get any questions answered. Um, while we're not running that formally, any of you are more than welcome to make an appointment um, with me in the collab at any time um, while you're going through Design Forward if you feel like you need a one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and then we have these, these are the five standard modules, two of which we're running this spring. Um, a couple things I want to say about these. Uh, these were, it was really hard to land on what these should be because um, this makes it seem like these are all distinct topics that stand on their own. And the reality is they do not. Um, there is no way to talk about technology, in, in our opinion, to talk about technology and tools and intentional choices without also talking about care and equity. Um, there's no way to talk about formats and mo modalities and teaching online and in other um, in modalities without talking about technology and tools. So please don't look at these and think this seems reductive. In order to practically offer Design Forward, we needed to kind of group things, but we acknowledge, and anybody who is participating in these modules should expect, that there will be crossover um, across these topics and across these modules frequently for everything from you know, questions and activities that could speak to to multiple ones of these modules or readings or resources that we're looking at that may be shared in multiple modules. Um, the idea is not to create silos of thinking about our teaching, but rather to try and come together with one particular aspect centered while the rest of this is still part of the, the, you know, the larger picture that we're considering. Um, so we have Introduction to Pedagogy, which we're running this spring. 
um, formats and modalities, which is a module that we um, have designed that's focusing more on online um, and the continuum, what we would say is kind of a continuum of, of modalities from traditional face-to-face -to, -face to fully asynchronous online learning. Introduction to critical instructional design, which is where we really get into um, grappling with what instructional design has been in the past and what we could do with it that's different in the context of design forward. Care and equity, which is also running this spring, which some of you are in. Um, and finally, technology and tools, which is really about centering our choices about technology and thinking critically about our use of technology. And then finally, we have these four flexible modules um, that probably won't be offered some of them as frequently as the standard modules. They're a little bit more unique. Um, were you going to talk about these, Robin? I think so. I'm going to turn this over to Robin to talk. Yeah, about I'll them. talk about it just for a second. Um, yeah. Also, I have no idea what Martha just said, because as you can see in the chat, my teenager came home and I was distracted. So I won't, uh, I'll, I will go really fast. And if I repeat it a little bit, um, did you talk about LRTP, Martha? Okay, so I just want to say that the uh, formats and modalities and the tech and tools se uh, sessions, we applied for basically a big grant from USNH to run both of those next year with some pretty good stipends attached for the entire system. We don't know yet if we got those, but um, that would be the fall plan if if that grant comes through. But either way, whether it's on a small scale, large scale, you know, system focused or whatever, we will be offering these um, in different configurations right along. The, the last column there, these are what we call the flexible modules. Um, they'll be offered more sporadically, but I think they offer some really cool possibilities, especially if any of you are um, leaders in your academic disciplines like program coordinators or AU leaders. Um, so for example, we are going to offer one called cohorts for programmatic design. So as you know, if you were at faculty meeting recently, we voted in some new cluster majors such as game design. It could be that um, a module of folks wants to come together um, potentially with a stipend for a semester to design a cluster major like that. And the collab could help project manage, uh, tie some things to pedagogy for you. Um, the strategic plan alignment, for example, if it's in the strategic plan that we focus on retention, we might build a module that specifically talks about how to design teaching environments, specifically looking at retention issues for students. Uh, independent study is if you want to take on a teaching challenge on your own, research it on your own, maybe have some check-ins with me and Martha and Hannah, um, but basically like taking an independent study for a student, but you want to do that in the scholarship of teaching and learning, um, we can support you in that. And then advanced seminar would be a little bit like the design forward track that we ran last summer. Um, it's for people who have completed a whole chunk of the modules before, um, and they really are enjoying the scholarship of teaching and learning. Maybe they want to do some um, publishing or writing in that area, and they want to convene a group together um, to really focus on kind of advanced practices in, in teaching and learning. So lots of possibilities, um, and you don't really need to wait for the collab to offer stuff in that flexible module category. You can always reach out to me and say, hey, I'm really interested in ABC. And maybe you help me put that together for you and we look for some, some support. Um, so that's the last part of the design forward modules. Yeah, I, um, one thing I wanted yeah. to just um, say is that, and we've reiterated this in a couple places, but I just wanna say it again, is that there's no expectation that everybody does everything. There's no expectation that you progress through this in a particular linear uh, track. Um, we really have, have tried to think about these modules as being related and interwoven, but not dependent upon each other, except for this one that you're in. Um, so that means that, again, it may mean that if you, if you uh, participate in a module, there may be some things that echo back to another module that you've participated in, but it shouldn't feel like, oh, because I didn't do intro to pedagogy, I don't really understand what's going on in care and equity. Rather, what we really encourage is for you to choose the modules that seem to resonate with you and your needs at that time, and to come back if something else arises that um, a new need emerges. Um, so that's a little bit different than how some traditional programs are designed. We're going to now jump into a little bit of sort of practical um, 
uh, overview of what it is you all need to know and do in order to be present and part of your module. And this is the part of the presentation, Robin and Hannah know that I like makes me super nervous because I've been working on the thing I'm about to show you for a couple of months. And it's been a endeavor of uh, that I care a great deal about, but that I'm very anxious that it all works correctly. Um, so I'm going to preface this by saying we're kind of um, building something new and different here. So be patient <laughs> if stuff doesn't work exactly right. You guys are our first um, real cohort and um, we, we value your input on what works and what doesn't. And we will, we will do our utmost to fix any problems that you encounter. So we're going to start here. This is the um, Design Forward website. Um, and I'm going to um, take us on a little bit of a tour of it um, so people can see uh, what's involved in this. Um, you can, if one of you guys can drop the link into chat there, thank you. You both did it at the same time. Um, some of you may have seen, I, I can't remember if we linked to this when we put out the call for, um, for this spring. So you may have seen some of this before. We've been adding a lot of content to it and we have um, content now in this module on this website in the orientation module and content is in here now for intro to pedagogy, which starts on Monday. Care and equity, you don't worry, it'll be there by the time we get to your module in April, but um, we're, we, we haven't quite um, published that section of the site yet. Um, if I start by clicking here on modules, it will give me the same overview that we showed in the presentation of all the different modules. So if you ever want a refresher about what different modules cover, this is where you can come to look. Um, and I would say you're welcome to, um, to go to the website and explore. You may wanna just follow along with me right now and then go back later um, just so that you don't get lost. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and jump into, um, I think I'm gonna actually jump into, I'm thinking about what comes next. I'm gonna jump into the orientation module first, just because it's a good quick overview. All of the modules have these four, what we're calling nodes um, for interaction. The first is what we're calling topics. Um, every module has probably two main topics that will be um, presented for you to explore and think more about. Then we have something called questions for discussion. This is a place for you to both um, enter into conversation with each other about important questions related to the module, but also to pose new questions. So it's kind of like a discussion forum, except it's happening all here on this website. It's a little bit um, more flexible maybe than what we think of as a discussion forum. Then we all also always have activities um, linked to every module and resources. Um, activities, I'll talk about this in a little bit uh, greater detail in a second. Many of the activities will come out of this, which is the workbook, which we sent out um, earlier this week. Hopefully you got a copy of it. If you haven't yet, it's waiting for you in your PSU mailbox. Um, the workbook, which again, I'll say more about in a minute, um, is a, 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 has been an ongoing project and we're using a lot of uh, the activities in there in the modules. Resources for study are for the most part readings all online that we will be using a tool called Hypothesis to annotate um, collectively in a, in a hypothesis group just for design forward. Um, if all of this sounds like a lot, don't worry. Um, we're gonna walk you through actually doing some of this stuff today. So by the time we finish today, you should feel uh, you know, like you've got this a little bit under control and we can always answer more questions and we'll tell you how to get answers to your questions as well. But I do think it's worth just pausing for a second because there will be a lot of things to look at, but what Martha just showed you there, topics, questions, activities, and resources, that's your whole module. Um, that that's everything about design forward for intro to pedagogy or care and equity. So by the time you leave today, we think you'll be pretty comfortable understanding topics, questions, activities, and resources. And your module is only two weeks long. And that's, that's really the four things that you're going to focus on. So even if it seems like a lot, remember, we just have to learn these four things. Okay. 
So the, um, the other piece that is on this website, and you all are going to get an account on this website, we're going to get you signed up for that today, is this thing um, called your portfolio um, that is linked to you. You have to be logged in in order to access your portfolio. This is my portfolio because I'm logged in as me. On your portfolio, you can share things, essentially. Um, right now, there are five different types of things you can share. You can share images. You can upload files. Um, for video, what that really is is a link to a video. So it, it needs to live somewhere else. This isn't really a media server that we're doing this on. But if you upload something to YouTube or to Vimeo, you can share that as a video. You can also share in your portfolio workbook pages that you've completed. I'll talk about how that works in a minute. It's not very fancy at the moment, but it is a way for you to, when you complete activities, if you want people to be able to see what you've done, you can share them to your portfolio and you can just share a written reflection, which um, is just a, a, you know, type some text in here. So each of these, if you click on these buttons, will open a little form um, that will let you submit that to your portfolio. Over on the right on the portfolio, all of you as members of the website can submit questions. Those are the questions that are part of the modules. If you've asked a question recently, it will show up as a question that you've submitted either for intro to pedagogy or orientation, um, whatever module or care and equity when you're in care and equity. And it would also show recent comments that you've made on questions. So this is just kind of like an overview of your presence in Design Forward, the stuff that you've done and shared, the things that you've said, um, and the comments and, and discussion that you've been a part of. Um, because I'm logged in right now, I see things. If you went to this URL right now, you wouldn't see, hi, Martha, do you wanna add to your portfolio? The site knows that I'm Martha. You would just see my portfolio. So that's another important part is that everything here is public. This is a public website. So stuff that you put up on your portfolio, you should put there because you want people to see it. If you're not ready for somebody to see something, that's fine. You do not need to share it to your portfolio. Um, but this is really a place for public presence of what's happening in Design Forward, something outward facing. Um, after your portfolio, um, let me go back. I'm gonna jump over to uh, the other module, Introduction to Pedagogy. There's a lot more content in here because orientation, we're not running it online this time, we're doing it here with you. So there's some stuff there that um, is related to what we're talking about today but it's not the you know it's not necessarily the full thing it's also a smaller module this is really a full two the full two week um intro to pedagogy uh, module so if you go into topics the two topics for this module have already been posted approaches to pedagogy and what is pedagogy um, we have some beginning questions that are in here um, that you can already once you create an account go ahead and begin answering We've identified um, activities for this module already. Four of them are from the workbook, and then we have one written reflection activity. And all of the resources are here for this module. Resources, for the most part, in these um, standard modules are, like I said, online readings that we'll be annotating collectively using Hypothesis, which if you've never used before, we're going to introduce you to today. Um, resources are grouped into ma two main categories. Group resources are for all of us to read and annotate together. So there's kind of an expectation we're all going to read all three of these things. Choice resources is just a big long list of other stuff that's related to this module that we'd love for everybody to at least pick one from um, that they choose to read and annotate. One thing to keep in mind is that your annotations um, your responses to questions, your work in this module is not going to go away after these two weeks are over, right? And we will offer this module again. So you're really entering into a community and a conversation, not just with the people right here in this Zoom, but with people next in the summer, next fall, next spring, who participate in Design Forward. We really believe that that's an important part of building a learning community is that continuity of experience and, and community. Yeah, Robin, I see you on mute. Just quick question, Martha, did you set up, um, I, I'm answering a question in the chat and so I will answer that in one second. Um, is the DF hypothesis group a public group or a private group? Do you remember? I believe it's public, but I okay. can double check. I'll double check that before okay. we get to it. Um, and I don't know that that was a, 
that is a choice that we can discuss. I don't know that that's a decision that's um, set in stone. Um, the last piece, though, that's a little bit different in this module from the orientation one that I showed you, I'm going to go back to the module home. So it's the same four nodes, topics, questions, um, activities, and resources. But because this is a module that's about to run asynchronously for two weeks, there's one more piece, and we've called these daily dispatches. These will be every day that you're enrolled in your module, we will post one of these. It will either be written by me or Robin or Hannah. And what it will be is sort of a daily roundup of the module. We will highlight one of the topics and maybe ask some particular questions about it. We will call your attention to particular questions, either ones that people have submitted where there's a lot of activity going on or ones that nobody's really answered yet and we'd love for people to jump in and start talking about. We'll also highlight an activity for the day, um, something that we'd love for people to take a look at and, um, and maybe a couple of resources as well. These are not module course requirements. Your daily dispatch is not your assignment for the day. It does not have to be your assignment for the day. It is our facilitation of the module. So for those of you who are overwhelmed, look at this and say, I don't even know where to start. We've got you covered. Look at the first daily dispatch. Take a look at what we suggest. Maybe follow along with that every day. At a certain point, though, maybe you've got a couple of days where you can't do anything. That's fine. Nobody's going to get angry with you. Nobody's going to come knock on your door and say, hey, Anne, why haven't you been participating in Intro to Pedagogy today? Um, you're allowed to dip into and out of this as works for you and your schedule and your particular needs. So maybe some of you have really busy Monday through Friday and you're planning on spending some time on a Saturday afternoon doing that. If that's the case, you might go back and look at the dispatches for the week, pick the things that look really interesting to you. Um, so the dispatches are really there as a tool, a facilitation tool. Um, don't feel like every morning when they come out, it's you know us knocking on your door, asking you to, to spend a lot of time right now doing something. Every dispatch we plan to have out by nine o'clock every day. Um, so you should be able to um, get a sense of, of what we're gonna call your attention to every day by nine o'clock. Um, I'm just jumping through. Um, so let me, you're, I know you're going to talk more about this in a second, yeah. but I want to just say a word about working in public. Yeah. Um, and this seems a good time to do it. And again, those of you who are following along on by clicking around, we are going to actually jump in and sort of test out all this stuff. So if you're confused now, that's totally fine. Um, so a question in the chat was sort of, you know, is this public? It's really important to understand that we're not in um, Canvas. We are on basically what is a website. Um, it's part of the CoLab website and it is completely public facing. So even though it's part of a Plymouth State, um, Plymouth Create environment, it's, it's a public website. What that means is when you do anything on this website, it is public. And so um, you'll have the chance to determine what that means for you when you're making decisions about how to sign up and we'll be doing sign up in a second. Uh, a couple of options, right? One is to um, work publicly and just share your ideas. This is what I plan to do. I plan to be myself, Robin DeRosa with my identity, um, sharing my ideas, both the good ones and the bad ones. And that is fine with me. Um, another option that you can do is you can work under a pseudonym, whether that's a funny pseudonym or something more like, you know, Plymouth State Prof or whatever. Um, you can do that if you feel like I want to be a little more experimental and I don't know exactly how much I want this connected to me. Um, but the other thing to realize is there are no requirements on Design Forward, so there are no activities there are no questions. There is nothing that you have to do. Um, we hope you will engage, but you may, for example, see an activity and be like, oh, I'd be embarrassed to do that, or I don't wanna put my ideas about that. You could do the activity and never share it on your portfolio. You could not respond to a question that you don't like, right? So um, to a certain degree at the end of the course, you may have done a whole bunch of work, but maybe all that you've put on the website is stuff that you feel comfortable putting on the website. So we do want you to um, you know, work 
with a pseudonym or pick and choose what you engage in online, knowing that it's public. Um, you're also able, and we can help you with this, um, to delete anything that you ultimately want to get rid of. So it's important to understand it's not Canvas. It is public. It's part of how we are going to build um, not just a, a series, but kind of a movement, right, of people who are critically involved in a community thinking about teaching, including people who are in the future. And some of these tools have the ability to talk back to you. You, you graduate from your module, you go on and, you know, you're, you're doing something else. Someone can engage with your stuff, think about it, and certain of those things can even ping you in the future um, so that you can stay involved with the community of practice. So um, it is about working in public on the web, and that is part of what we will constantly be talking about in a lot of these modules. Thank you, Robin. Um, the last thing I want to do is, is just talk a little bit more about the Design Forward Workbook. Um, it is, like I said, a project that has been in development um, since last summer. Uh, all of most of the activities that are in here were developed as part of the pilot of Design Forward last summer. And what we've done is taken that um, collection and matched them with the different modules that we're now teaching. So four of um, the activities are, in fact, they should be the first four in the version that you got. Um, are the activities for intro to pedagogy. And then the next four should be um, the activities for care and equity. But there's a table of contents. It's, it's easy to find. Throughout the um, uh, workbook, you'll also find some pages that are just notes where you can take notes. Um, I use those for when I'm writing down what I need to fix on the Design Forward website. I put it on my notes page in my Design Forward workbook. Um, uh, these activities are meant to be um, fun. <laughs> they are meant like our goal with the workbook was to create a, uh, a, a tool for educators to get them thinking outside the box about their teaching. So some of them are a little bit wacky. Some of them are a little unexpected. Um, they're just like with everything designed forward, there are no right answers to any of these. Um, nobody's getting graded on their workbook activities. Um, they are meant to be a tool for exploration of your own values, of your own pedagogy, of your own intentions in your teaching. As Robin said, you should only share those things that you are comfortable with sharing. When it comes to sharing one of these, the very high tech way that we have to do it right now is that you get at your phone and you take a picture <laughs> and then you upload it to the website. Um, eventually, we have the hopes that we could make this a digital kind of interactive experience on the website, but that was beyond the possibilities for this spring. Um, so very low tech, um, when you upload a workbook activity, you can upload up to three images. That's because there are no activities that are more than three pages. Um, you can also write a little description. So if you want to, you can also add some more. You can put in an explanation or something about your thinking as you were doing this activity, or you could say, I'm not, I feel kind of weird sharing this, but I want to put it out there. Um, people can comment on portfolio items as well. So that's also something you could share with other people in, in your module and say, hey, I put this out here. I'd love for people to look at it and tell me what you think. So that's what the workbook is about. Hopefully people get a chance to explore it and have a little bit of fun with it. Um, all right, I am gonna jump back to the presentation.